What's going on guys? It is me, Lone Vault Wanderer, here with some more gaming news for you. As always, we have three pieces of gaming news to talk about, so please put your thoughts about them in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. Also as well, yesterday I uploaded a Doom Let's Play of myself getting pretty salty at the multiplayer beta. I would really appreciate it if you check that video out, it's in the description below. I understand that a lot of you don't really like to watch Let's Plays or even compilation videos, but I put a lot of hard work into it and I would really appreciate it. So the first news topic is going to be about the PS 4.5, PS 4K, PS 4 Neo, whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> and the rumours about that and also about the new upgradable Xbox One. So I'm not covering a particular article here, I just wanted to spitball and do this in one take by the way. So if I stumble and mumble, it's because I haven't had the time to edit all of this out, but we're going to keep going. So the PS4 Neo, or the PS Neo, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> this is a new PlayStation that's apparently coming out very soon. It's been rumoured for a while, and right now it's effectively officially confirmed. And it's essentially an upgraded PS4. It has a better GPU, has a better CPU, better processor. This is all from memory, but roughly, it's essentially, a, you know, a more beefy PS4 that has the ability to output 4K if the developer decides to. But the main selling point, or I guess the main uh, aspect of the upgrade is the fact that it has a better uh, frame rate. And that's particularly important for the PlayStation VR, which is also coming out very soon. And this is probably why uh, Sony has decided to upgrade their PS4. And then you've got the Xbox One and Microsoft, which was interesting. Phil Spencer came out previously and he said, yeah, you know, we're thinking about having an upgradable Xbox One. So not like the PS4 Neo, where it's a sole, you know, uh, piece of hardware, like the, the new console, that's just a pack, which is better than their previous iteration. But instead, with the new Xbox One that actually allows you to upgrade different components. So for example, let's say, and this is me speculating here, but let's say Microsoft came out with a new Xbox One that was upgradable, and then they sold different components separately. So you could buy three different variations of a GPU, for example, and those uh, GPUs could be upgraded over time and they could release further editions of GPUs that are better. So they could really, really adapt to technology as it improves, because as you guys all know, technology is really evolving at an increasingly fast rate. I wouldn't say exponentially, but it is growing, growing faster and faster by the day. And these new consoles, I think, are a reflection of that. But of course, the difference between these consoles, the PS4, again, is a sole standalone unit from what I see, and it seems that the new Xbox One is gonna be upgradable. So I just want to give my thoughts out on this and a bit of background or transparency. I have a PC and Xbox One. Um, I've never really been a long time Xbox fan. I started off with the Super Nintendo, then I went to the Nintendo 64, then I went to the PS2, uh, then I went to the 360, and then I've stayed on the three, sorry, the Xbox One, only because I wanted to keep all of my achievements and things like that. But predominantly nowadays I play on PC. So that's a bit my, of my background. So as you can see, I've played all kinds of consoles, so I'm not biased towards any of them, especially because I don't really play much console anymore. And I wanted to give my opinions as to what I think of the general situation and what do I think about each of these different ideas, I guess, that both Microsoft and Sony are pursuing. First of all, the whole fact of having upgraded consoles midpoint in a console generation. I think we're roughly midpoint. Um, I think this is a reflection of the fact that when the Xbox One and the PS4 were initially released, they were not underpowered, but they weren't as overpowered as, for example, the PS3 was when it was, was released, or the Xbox 360 when it was released. So because they were kind of, I think they were generally considered mid-range PCs, for example, when they were launched, the fact that technology is increasing and improving at such a fast rate nowadays, they haven't become obsolete by any means. Like you see a lot of, you know, PC, PS4, Xbox One comparisons of games nowadays. And to be honest, for the most part, they look the fucking same, right? Um, I can definitely notice the differences on my screen and you guys might not notice the differences on an IGN video because the YouTube video is compressed. But nevertheless, th th there's not that much of a difference. But the thing is, again, technology is improving. And over time, these pieces of hardware, they're standalone, they're a, a solid box, and they can't be improved, they can't be upgraded like a PC can. And because of that, and because technology is improving so fast, 
the consoles are finding it more and more difficult by the day to keep up with technology and to have these games that are coming out on PC that look better and better and better, but when they're on the console, it's hard for them to keep up. So I guess this is a good thing that we're seeing better consoles come out. It's really shit for people that have bought previous consoles like recently. It's like a lot of people have bought a PS4 recently and now all this news is coming out and they're like, shit, you know, what am I meant to do? I've just bought this PS4 and now you're telling me it's going to be the inferior version. Now, Sony has said that games won't be exclusive to the PS4 Neo. It's the way that it's going to work is that every game that's released on the PS4 must have a standard version and must have a Neo version. So it, it, it will play differently and it would run differently depending on which console it was. Obviously, if it was the, the Neo, it would have a better frame rate, probably a better graphical fidelity. It might be able to output 4K, but who knows? And then it's about, you know, which model do I prefer, which idea or concept that both Sony and Microsoft are pursuing, which one of those do I prefer? And to be honest, and a lot of people are going to call me an Xbox fanboy for this, but I don't really care because I think the reason why the PC, you know, model and concept and idea has been so successful is the fact that you can upgrade. You know, anytime a new graphic card comes out or, you know, a new RAM or new processors or whatever it is, right, um, you can upgrade your PC. So if you find your PC getting a bit sluggish and having it difficult, you know, keeping up to date with all these new games coming out and your resolution slowly dips and your frame rate slowly dips, you can upgrade your PC, get a new GPU, get a new RAM, get, get whatever, you know, you can do that. You have the flexibility. That's the beauty of PCs and that's why they proliferated and become so and so popular. But the thing is, you don't have that concept with the PS Neo. What you have is a better console, but that's still a closed box, something that's not upgradable. What I like about Xbox's, uh, I guess, rendition of having an upgraded console is the fact not only is it going to be better straight away, you know, as soon as it re it's released, but then you can upgrade it, you know? If, if Xbox does this as I think it's going to be doing it, it might come out with a set of, uh, a, a range of GPUs, for example. And then a year from now, it might have better GPUs that you can just easily plop into your Xbox One. That's a complete speculation, but that's what I envision Xbox is trying to do. And they're trying to integrate their, their ecosystem and their console with Windows 10 and PC so much that I think they're trying to transition to that kind of model. They're trying to have the best of both worlds, where you have the benefits of a console that's still relatively less complex than a PC, but then you just up the ante a little bit by enabling you to upgrade it. And I think the difference in terms of complexity between a PC and what Xbox is planning to do, or is rumored to do, is the fact that it's still not going to be as complex to upgrade this new Xbox One compared to a PC. Because if Microsoft released their own range of GPUs, processors, RAM, whatever, it's not as difficult for an Xbox owner to research and determine which model is best for them, or which graphics card is best for them, whatever. If you have a PC, there's a lot of stuff on the market. You really have to do a lot of research. You have to determine whether things are compatible with your motherboard, shit like that, right? So every time you want to upgrade, there's that necessary groundwork that you need to do. You won't need to do that if Xbox One does what I think it's going to be doing. You might have to do a little bit of research to determine which new graphics card you're going to upgrade to your Xbox One, but there might only be three options, so the decision's not going to be that hard. So I do prefer the Xbox One's uh, vision of this, but it's going to be interesting to see how they both go down. And the second piece of news is about Doom. No, I'm not covering the negative reviews that have been happening recently. I have a separate video about that. And a lot of people have left really, really great comments. So thank you for that. I do appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just had dinner. I'm a bit burpy. Um, so if you check the link in the description below, you'll be taken to Bethesda.net and they're talking about more content that's coming out for Doom next month, I believe, sometime next month on the 13th. Uh, as you guys know that there was recently an open beta and it was somewhat successful, negative feedback again, but we're not touching on that. We're going to be talking about the new news that's been coming out for Doom. So I want to read this verbatim and then we're going to be discussing it a little bit. So Bethesda says that next week we'll be hosting two streams to give you an in-depth look at Doom's intense single-player campaign and innovative stat map. So the first one's on Monday, April 25th. Kick off the week with an exclusive look at Doom's snap map mode at 2pm EDT on Monday, April 25th. Tom Mustaine with the Snapmap team will show off the wide range of co-op, single player and multiplayer content you'll find in Snapmap. God, that's a tongue twister sometimes. Um, we'll also walk you through creating a mode and show you just how crazy you can get with the powerful Snapmap tools. 
So snap map, from what I see, is the ability for you to create your own multiplayer maps. That's fucking awesome. That's another layer of depth that can be added to a multiplayer game and make it that much more successful. It's been done with games in the past. A big example, of course, is GTA. And I always see, for example, the Funhouse team, they're always playing GTA on new multiplayer maps, crazy maps, doing races, things like that. It, it looks like a lot of fun. And if Doom and the Doom team can kind of replicate that uh, for their new game that's coming out, then that might be very successful and it might give much more longevity and depth to the multiplayer component. And the thing that I'm really looking forward to with Doom is the fact that it has this really fun multiplayer, I thought it was fun anyways, and then this single player campaign as well. It has both of those components um, and, and, and I hope that both of them just knock them out of the park because Doom is still such an interesting concept and you know it's just a lot of fun, it's a lot of gore and being able to experience that on your own and with friends is just going to be so much fun. So let's look at the stream they're going to be having for single player. So join us again on Wednesday April 27 at 2pm EDT for a walkthrough of a part of Doom's single player campaign led by executive producer Marty Stratton and creative director Hugo Martin. Be among the first in the world to see the several never before seen levels and watch Hugo and Marty just show off how intense Doom can be. Again, I'm really looking forward to the single player campaign. What I do hope, I, I know they have the, the setting is interesting, the enemies are interesting, you know, the, the demons, whatever. The guns are fun. The game looks, you know, colorful, gory, it looks, it looks good. It plays well, it's definitely a solid shooter. What I'm looking for, and this is probably going back of my love of, you know, good stories. I, I hope that I see, you know, or we see a good story in Doom single player. I know that they have all of these things going for it, but what makes a good game a great game and, and, and a great game a perfect game is if you have an awesome story, a compelling story that you can somehow draw people in, something that's intriguing. And I, I, I don't know, like, I'm, I guess I'm kind of worried that Doom might not have that really intriguing, compelling story, just from what I've seen. I, I hope that it isn't mundane. Maybe it's going to be as good as Wolfenstein was, for example. I know that that was a, a good single play campaign, and I'm still going through it, and I love it. Um, and I'm hoping that they could replicate that kind of story element to, to at least add more depth to this game. Because having a fun single player campaign is one thing, but having it be emotionally driven and compelling and have an interesting story with interesting characters, I hope that it is able to do that. But just from what I've seen, I don't know if it has interesting characters, to be honest. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, but fingers crossed. Alrighty, and the last piece of news is about Fallout 4's 1.5 update. I'm going to be reading all of this verbatim so you get all of the information and then I'll talk about it. So on the Bethesda.net article, Bethesda says, Along with support for our upcoming add-on Far Harbor and additional gameplay optimizations, the 1.5 update, now available as a beta on Steam, features the revamped survival mode which incorporates a number of changes based on beta feedback. Thanks again to those who participated. In the coming weeks, 1.5 complete with survival mode will be released on Xbox One and PS4. So essentially the news is that it's going to be released onto the consoles. Also in development, the creation kit and Bethesda.net mods are still in closed beta, unfortunately. We hope to add support for mods to the 1.5 Steam beta soon. Interesting. With console support for mods coming in updates that follow. Stay tuned to Bethesda.net and the forums for when those updates will go live. That sounds like things are coming really, really soon. So console players, you know, hmm, we're going to be getting those mods soon and I'll make a bunch of videos on it. It's, it's going to be a blast. You guys are going to, really going to enjoy the benefits that mods can have to a game like Fallout 4. I'm so excited for you if you've never experienced mods before because the first time that I did with Fallout 3, it was just an awesome experience. But anyways, and then there are a bunch of little fixes. I don't need to go through them. There's a fucking lot of them. Um, and also it has instructions there if you want to access the beta on Steam, for example. So check the Bethesda.net article in the description below. It'll explain it all there. Steam has had this beta out for a while. I already have a video where I talked about my thoughts about survival mode and the new improvements or additions, I should say, that they've added. And I'll put that video in the description below. You can check it out for yourself. Um, but what I really want to touch on is the fact that we're getting the creation kit and we're getting console mods soon. This is where Fallout 4 is really going to shine. I know, and this is not my sentiments, it's what I'm seeing in the community, so don't get mad at me. I know that there are people still disappointed with Fallout 4. But this is the, the bread and butter of Fallout games, let alone BGS games or Bethesda games. is the fact that you can highly customize your game and highly mod your game. 
when the creation kit is out there is going to be so much more we can do with this game and it's going to be exciting and the fact that for the first time console players are going to be able to enjoy having these mods is going to be an awesome experience for you. Honestly, as I said, I, I wish that I was in the same position as you guys because to be able to experience mods for the first time is gonna be exciting for you. And I think modders are gonna be able to add a lot of great things. It's gonna completely revamp your game. Maybe so, not so much in the graphics department. I need to stress that or preface that there. But think, look, listen to this, right? I can't even talk properly right now. There are actually a lot of mods currently available on the Fallout 4 Nexus which they actually optimize the graphics and the textures of the game. So your game probably could run more smoothly on console with all of these mods that are available. So the future is honestly looking bright for this game. I know that the console versions of Fallout 4 had some frame rate issues at times. I did experience it on Xbox One. Maybe the game is going to be able to run better, at least at a solid 30 FPS, because there are, at, at times, especially when entering Diamond City, for example, and there are many other examples, it's all in my review, the frame rate did drop, and I reviewed the game on Xbox One, so I know that those problems did exist. And these optimization mods that are already out for Fallout 4 on the PC, I think these are going to be really, really beneficial for the console. And hopefully it's not too much work for modders to actually port those existing mods over to the console. Hopefully it's just a simple matter of uploading it to Bethesda.net or whatever and saying, yep, put this on the console. I hope it's that easy. And it's, again, it's exciting times. So anyways, Way Sanders, put your thoughts about all of these topics in the comments below. And until next time, please take care of yourself and keep fighting the good fight.